How has this event been for you personally? Well, personally, uh, this event has been absolutely um, moving, emotional, uh, encouraging. So many people have turned out to celebrate the idea that we can move uh, past a dark period in our history. The symbolism of the demolition of St. Michael's School is a really significant uh, symbolism. So it becomes a significant moment for all of us. And we've been looking for ways and means to continue our healing journeys as former students of this school, survivors. And I think the last two days have been absolutely um, miraculous. People have come from far and wide and really engaged uh, in the process. And it's an illustration of how much uh, former students and their families care about trying to find a way to move from the despair and brokenness and the harm and to begin to move beyond victimhood. To say, you know what, I'm going to empower myself to be all that I can be and I'm going to be free and liberate myself from that haunting memory of my life experience, uh, childhood experience in a residential school. message do you want rest of Canada to know about this? Well, I think that the rest of Canada needs to know that uh, Aboriginal people, many of us are um, ready to move forward and that we need to engage with each other and develop new relationships between us uh, based on dialogue that creates deeper understanding and therefore transforming our relationships so that all of us at the end of the day create the kind of Canada that's inclusive and it's mutual and we design what Canada looks like in the days and years to come. Yeah. And how will it feel for you when you pull into the bay and the school's gone? Oh my goodness, I've, I've seen that school so often. When I pull into the bay, every time I pull into the bay, it's like I said, a haunting sort of presence uh, and not to see it will be uh, delightful. And we can see that from the moment that we were here together, uh, to witness the beginning of the demolition is a significant moment we're going to remember and keep reminding ourselves uh, that we can move forward, that we have resilience, we have courage, we have vision, and we can do all the things that we need to do to move forward. And, and one of the things I'm, I'm certain about is that as we do that, more and more and more Canadians are going to engage with us and walk with us, and there'll be different forms of reconciliation, economic reconciliation, uh, uh, political reconciliation, legal reconciliation. What we're doing now, I think, is laying the ground for the kind of um, understanding that's required to reshape our relationships. Will there be a commemorative marker? Yeah, the band's really committed to it. Of course, we would make sure that they were committed to it. And there are, uh, in Re on Reconciliation Canada's website, there's going to be a, a monument uh, commemoration uh, page that'll ask survivors to keep having input into what they think should be the monument. But the Namkis Band is very committed to um, a memorial of some kind. And, and that uh, speaks to the question of why we don't uh, why we're not sad that this building is being demolished. We're still going to be able to not forget by having the monument, right? And generations and generations of people are going to see this monument and say, my God, uh, I di we didn't know that, but we know now. And, and I think that's a, a real promise for Canada that we can discover the ugly truth about ourselves and be able to say, but now that I know, I'm, I'm going to react differently. I'm going to see the world through a lens of a reconciliation, a framework of reconciliation. So there's a lot of hope and promise in this small activity here today, but I think it's, it's just uh, indicative of a broader uh, optimism that's growing among survivors and Aboriginal people. And do you feel the spirits of the children who died in school? Oh, absolutely, absolutely, we do, yeah, yeah. We, um, uh, uh, maybe just a week ago, we went in there because we were cared for the spirits of those little children and we smudged that entire building. We don't call it smudge in our way, we call it kwakya, to smoke, which is to smudge. And we smudged every floor, every room, uh, uh, early in the morning, and we talked to those little ones, wherever they were there, and to say, you know, it's time to be free, and it's time to go home, and, and, and so we took care of that as well, yeah.